Good morning, and is it morning? Yes, it is still morning. Welcome to an Elite Audio video. And it's some time since we have done an unboxing uh, here. Um, we decided to give our slicer and dicer some well-earned uh, respite and time off. We have had some emails from a few concerned uh, audiophiles as to its well-being. So here it is. I just want to reassure everybody that nothing sinister happened to it. I know you've seen me casually throwing it across the showroom um, and naturally uh, those of you out, out there who uh, really I would say care for the Stanley 1990 and its, its obvious heritage um, would write to us with concern. So here it is in the flesh, it is the original as you can see, I'll just bring it up so Graham can uh, get a better shot on it. You can see it bears the many scars of numerous unboxing videos and it has been with us since day one. It's like a member of our team. Um, you know, we celebrate its birthday each year. Uh, Andrew took it to see the new Top Gun movie which I absolutely loved. Um, he did actually get arrested for carrying an offensive weapon. Um, but anyway, these are just the small sacrifices in order to keep a member of our team happy. Anyway, today we are here to unbox the absolutely incredible Trenor and Frido Sun Loud speakers. Trenor and Frido are an Austrian company. Um, they are based in the mountainous and heavily for forested area of Styria in Austria. Um, we have Andreas and Peter who are the main protagonists and the gurus of such incredible loud speaker designs. The Sun is the smallest and the entry level in the Trenor and Friedel range. It's an amazing loudspeaker. I'll, I'll talk to you about it as we're unboxing it so I can tell you the, the relevant points. So let's get started. So as you can see the box is absolutely diminutive. It is. We were just chatting before we started doing this video thinking do these speakers inflate? Is it, the, is it like the old little sponges I remember as a kid in the bath, your mum would hand you one and you put it in the water and suddenly boom, it would expand out. Do we have to put these in water before we use them? Have they been freeze dried in Austria? I'm not sure. Um, but they are, it's just incredible. I mean, two speakers in there, quite weighty I've got to say, it's not light by any standard. So um, let's get open in these. So we'll start off with our, again, our, as I say, our very trusty slicer and dicer. And it's just so beautiful to use this. Um, those health and safety watching me pull that Stanley knife towards me will probably be having apoplexy right now. Um, I'm just carefully cutting the top there. I've learned over the years that when you're cutting the top of anything, you never protrude the blade too low. And um, many years ago, I learned the hard way by scoring the top of an amplifier, not with this slicer and dicer, but uh, many, many years ago. So if uh, Graham comes across, we'll see here that we have the top part of the box. Now, this here, I'm going to drop this out of this internal box, which will make it easier to open. So I'm going to just dip this on its head. Let these come out so we can see they are double boxed. Bring this back here and let us bring these into. Oh. I was doing it by surprise, I must admit, wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, very well packaged. So again, if you want to just come over, if you come a bit closer. This is the back of the speaker. Um, here you can see the Cardas, uh, sorry, Cardas uh, speaker terminals, they're the part protruding up. Uh, these are uh, spade only. They've got Cardas internal wiring as well. Right, so um, let us get these out of the box. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the side packing here and the front packing. And then there's again, a, you can see these are really well packed. These are only ever going to arrive in, in the condition that they left the factory. Um, we would obviously probably triple box these if we were sending them out to a customer just for added safety. I won't take my watch off again. I've learned over the years that um, you can catch the strap of your watch on a nice piece of cabinetry and these are so there's an interesting thing before I take them out so Trenor and Friedel 
they've got an eco policy where they want to source as much of the materials locally and uh, as natural as possible. So these are Austrian birch cabinets, sourced locally. They don't believe in bringing in exotic, I would say, very rare hardwood veneers, again, from an eco policy. And, and actually what's interesting, internally, these speakers are damped with natural wool. Austrian wool, I hasten to add. Right, so we'll take the back uh, part off as well. So now as you can see, I'm just left with the two loudspeakers. So I'm just going to very carefully get my hands in here and bring one of them out. So there we go. Um, that is it's tiny. It's absolutely tiny. Um, I've read a lot of reviews on these. One in particular by Stereophile and the reviewer was just absolutely blown away with the dynamics and scale that these diminutive, and they are absolutely diminutive, but I'm going to take that uh, bit of tape off there, I don't want it catching the cabinet, so bring this down. So let me just turn this back up the other way. So there we go, I can now do the reveal, so to speak. So I'm going to stand up now. Whoa. Right, so, um, some looks like this little marks off the um, cover just from transbing and just wipes off. I'll just carefully turn this around. In fact, before we do that, I'm just going to show you. So this is a single coaxial driver. It's made by Seas. Um, the one thing with uh, coaxial drivers if, is if they are implemented correctly, they have the potential to outperform in terms of rhythm and timing a multi-driver array that you'd see in a conventional loudspeaker. I see this is made by Seas. You've got an internal, and I think it's one inch or one or a quarter inch tweeter. And then outside you've got the woofer and mid-range uh, in this concentric design. On the back here, you now see the Cardass uh, speaker binding post. And as I said, these are spade only, so uh, you will need to invest. I'm just going to move this so you can actually see this properly. So your spades obviously go on there, and then obviously you hold them in place by tightening up the binding post. Cardass wiring internally too. Um, these are beautiful. I have to say, the the fit and finish on these really is something spectacular. I love this natural wood finish. And the texture even of this is very impressive. As I said, so um, these are built to the golden ratio, which are those of you in the know will know that's 1 to 1.618. Um, what that does is it reduces internal standing wave in the cabinet, which is vital when it comes to reducing distortion in the sound. They also, in the birch cabinet, they build it with varying density across the cabinet and again this also enhances the benefits of the golden ratio so it's like a double whammy you've got the golden ratio reducing internal standing waves you've then got the varying density of the cabinet doing exactly the same job the end result is you get the cleanest best timed best separation and I honestly, I've not heard a pair of these. I cannot wait to hear these because every single review that I have read has said exactly the same thing. If you close your eyes, you would believe you were listening to a very large floor stander. This is a trick. It's interesting. A lot of reviewers draw a comparison to the Bernicke W5 and with good reason because ultimately, I guess, this is its direct competitor albeit at a much lower price point. So if it can pull off what the W5 can do for less money, then this really is something well worth consideration. Um, the other thing when you read the reviews, they recommend that you should have at least 50 watts per channel. It's a four ohm speaker. So 50 watts per channel. However, um, the uh, Stereophile reviewer used a 22 watt per channel valve up again with great results so i think there is an element of versatility there the general consensus is that 50 watts upwards is what you need we will be testing that ourselves and again the latter part of this video you will see the setup in our small listening room we're going to use the hi-fi rose re 180 integrated and we're going to use the rs 150 for streaming but anyway 
These are beautiful. Uh, the crossover is handmade in Germany by Mundorf. Mundorf, obviously famous for their capacitors, and naturally it uses the highest spec Mundorf capacitors that are available uh, in the crossover itself. Um, this, the, the, the technology that's used in the crossover means that you get the cleanest and detailed, but never harsh, high frequencies. And again, we'll be putting that to the test once we get these set up. So, there's the speaker. Um, I'm not bothered taking another one out, it's, it's wrapping just now, because what I want to do is now show you the custom made wooden stand that goes with these. So, place this down here for a second. As you can see, it says Sun Stand on there. And using the trusty slicer and dicer, we will explore the contents of this box. Um, so, more traditional use of styrofoam and Straight away, I've got to say I'm really impressed with how this is, how it's been packaged. Great care, attention to detail, even you can see that the covering they've put around the stand itself has been so meticulously done with shrink wrap either end to hold it all in place. Uh, right, so, uh, let me figure out, yeah, that's going to be a straight pull up here, so let just bring these out. And i work out which way up this is going to go. Um, I do like, as I say, this, the attention to detail, the way these have been wrapped is really impressive. I think that's the box. Let's just put this back in here. I'll put the box out of the way. Right. So I'm going to be extremely careful here. So we've obviously got styrofoam separating this in the middle, so I'm just going to carefully cut down. The slicer and dicer is obviously needing a new blade. I think it's tricked to see the new top gun move is probably just a bit overwhelming for it. So um, let's cut this here. Right, okay. So this is the first time I've ever unboxed a pair of these stands. Um, and right, okay, let us get this separator piece out of the way. And I can hear the noise of it, sounds like you've got there's the base part of there. <laughs> There are some sweeties in there, which is quite interesting. I don't know if Graham can close in on that, but that's, <laughs> that's really taken me by surprise. They are Tutti Frutti original fruit flavour, straight from Austria. I'm sure there's no sheep wool in there, but again, we find out once we get into them. I'm not sure how we use them in building the stands, but maybe it's just to make the whole thing a bit more pleasurable. Right, so. There's stand one and stand two. Fascinating. Okay. Okay, so to save a bit of time, I've unboxed the or unpackaged the feet for this. Um, I'm now finished with the slicer and dicer, so in the age old tradition of a late audio, I will now dispense of that. Um, oops. Anyway, it's just a small cut. It'll, it'll, it'll be fine. You okay, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> good. good, right, okay, right, so here we go. Um, the base part of this is in three pieces. We have a front piece here, and then you have two similar side pieces. So these are really simple to assemble. I'm just going to lay this down here flat. You can't actually get this wrong because the whole spacings are matched for both sets of feet. Uh, it's just a simple process of dropping in uh, these two screws or bolts and just lining them up with the actual holes on the front of the cabinet there. Uh, I always recommend that when you put these in to start with you use your hand uh, to 
just catch the thread properly. It's very easy to um, miss thread if you don't do that and if you start to miss thread then you get a problem because then obviously naturally the bolt itself will get jammed. Um, so that's the first part of this done and um, then we'll probably bring it up this way so now we've got the second part here and that will go on this way so again by the magic of video we'll pause there for a second and then show you the end result and again as if by magic here we have the completed trainer and Fido Sun stand I've got to say you know, it's interesting, we've been discussing just off camera again the, the build quality that goes into these stands because again, the other brand we mentioned, they do a, like a metal stand at the time I think it cost about seven or eight hundred pounds um, These again are handmade um, You can tell that there's a lot of thought gone into how they look in terms of the aesthetic uh, Beautifully, I mean again, just the construction of these, the finish of them they are absolutely to the highest standard, I've got to say. Um, it comes with the little rubber feet, so what you would do is you would stick these on here, which again just decouples your speaker from the stand itself. And let me just place this on top here now, and then you guys can get the final effect. There we go. So, Trenor and Fido Sun loudspeakers with the matching stands. As I say, they start at two and a half thousand pounds, but the time you add in the stands, it uh, brings you up to three, five, three, six for these. The stands are optional, you don't have to buy them, but I think aesthetically, I can see a lot of people wishing to have this all fully matching, which would make a lot of sense. Um, absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to give you feedback on what we think of the sound. So. Uh, the next part of this video will be to have them connected up in the small listening room and then we can tell you a bit more about the sonic characteristics. So as you can see we have the suns and the matching stands set up here in our small listening room. We've had them running about an hour and um, for copyright reasons as most of you will know with YouTube we can't actually play music unfortunately. But here is what we've heard, so straight out of the box, they <laughs> really impress. The things that I would say that I would immediately concur with in terms of reviewer quotes, they sound really big. I mean, the bass is there, which I can't believe from such a tiny cabinet. There are, which um, if you look in the back, if you um, think of the first out of the video, there's four drilled holes in the rear of these that are beautifully engineered as well and they act as a rear port so they are rear ported and I think that's obviously assisting the bass uh, response. The sound stage is incredibly defined so vocals, instruments, the whole layering front to back is very obvious um, and straight out of the box yeah I wouldn't normally expect a loudspeaker to sound that open because with most speakers brand new they need a minimum of three four days of continued use so if these improve from there all I can say is wow it's interesting because I mentioned earlier about the review done by a uh, stereophile and it was actually by a reviewer called uh, Ken Mikaleff and what he said I've written the quote down because um, there was two things that he said which I think really sum up these speakers Firstly, he said he was bowled over and blown away, which is quite a statement from a, a stereophile reviewer. And secondly, and perhaps the most important statement he made in his summary was, these are the finest stand mount speakers he had heard. For any reviewer to make that one single claim about any component is a statement in itself because you're absolutely setting the yardstick for everything before and everything that comes afterwards. Um, so what we've done is we've set this up here, the sun's on their stand, we've had them right back, you can shove these right back against the wall, hence you can stick them in a, literally in a bootcase if you want. Um, 
As you know, these are the matching stands, but literally you could stick them right in a bookcase. And if you look on the Trenner and Frido website, you will actually see photographs of where they've actually done this. We're using the Hi-Fi Rose RA180 with the uh, RS150 streamer. And it's a great combination. We've played through, we've all had a quick listen, playing through tracks that we are familiar with. And it just, they just don't disappoint. They really do not disappoint. And for most people, I think there's more than enough bass audible, which is really surprising. And especially given as well, how far away we have them from the back wall here. Um, you move them closer, the bass is just going to get stronger. So it's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a TARDIS effect going on and whatever uh, those two genius guys are doing over at Trenner and Friedel, it's something a bit special. So there we go. Um, the Trenner and Friedel Sons, you can get links to reviews. So we'll, we'll put links uh, in the section below the video. Uh, please, if you've got any questions, write them in the comments below. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. If you're interested in a home trial, we can organize that for you too. And if you really are someone who wants a very pure sound, because that's what they give and everything about their design ethos is about the purity of the sound, you know, the golden ratio design, the varying uh, density of the birch uh, wood in the cabinet itself. Everything is designed to maximize the potential and that's why the reviews are all very similar and the reviewers are all saying very similar things. So there we go. Uh, thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on our social network page, Facebook. Uh, we always like to hear from you. If you want to have a chat about these, pick up the phone, give us a call and uh, we will happily converse for hours on end uh, about how they may fit in with your system. As we've said, Trend and Freedom recommend an amplifier 50 watts or more, but some reviewers have tested them with lower than that and had great results. Um, again, we can advise you in terms of your own system how that might work. Thanks for watching and look forward to speaking to you again very soon.